It's time for Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccr.com. Coach's Corner is brought to you by Todd's Electric, James Pharmacy, Lamb Motors, Avera, Hawaii Federal Credit Union, and Edward Jones Financial. Coach's Corner is also brought to you by Graham Tire, Kruger Contracting, CHS River Plains, Gales Gas, Bank West, and Capital City Ford, Lincoln, and Toyota. From the KCCR Studios in Pier, KCCR award-winning sports director, John Winkler. And a good evening as we welcome you here inside the KCCR Studios on this Wednesday evening. John Winkler here as we will talk uh, state tournaments time. It is state tournament time, and we'll talk with Coach Rebecca Feller of the uh, Pier Gymnastics team as well as also Sean Lewis of the Pier Boys Wrestling team as the state gymnastics meet is here in Pier Friday and Saturday, and the state dual tournament for the boys will be on Saturday in Brookings, and we'll talk with both those coaches coming up here in just a little bit. Also, I have a chat with uh, Coach Steve Steele of the Hawaii Capitals and uh, Coach Kent Huckins of the Pier Swim Team after their swim meet took place uh, this past weekend. Uh, we'll, we'll recap that and talk with him here in just a little bit. We'll first start with uh, Coach Steve Steele of the Hawaii Capitals. That'll be coming up next. You're listening to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Ah, uh, why am I so sore? There are everyday moments. Whoa, hey, hold the ladder! Hold the ladder! Oh, oh. Yeah, that hurt. And there are epic moments. Slide, 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 Class of 1995! When a moment creates a health need, visit the experts at Avera Orthopedics. We're moving health forward so you can tell the story. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Todd's Electric at 223-2518. With over 30 years of experience, Todd's Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agriculture. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. That number again is 223-2518. Todd's Electric Service, serving the Pier Fort Pier area. Todd's Electric Service, the line to power. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined, so y'all can sit here and ask me all the questions y'all want to. I'm going to answer with the same answer, so y'all can shoot if y'all please. This is Coach's Corner on your home for the Pier Governors, KCCR, and online at kccrradio.com. As we welcome you back to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and, on you, and online at kccrradio.com, join me as Coach Steve Steele, the White Capitals coach. You got a, the win uh, on Saturday against Brandon Valley, and you know a, a game where th- their record is, you know, they're at the bottom of the standings. The record isn't very good, but, and you guys took care of business. It wasn't a game where they were able to hang around. You guys were able to score early, score often, and, and pick up a pick up a big win. Yeah, and you know that's what you go for you know, when you're playing those types of games. Is you want to go and you want to take care of business and, and you want to move on. And you know, I think I was very proud of the guys to be able to do that, uh, especially you know with Pink the Rink going on and just the extra emotion and energy in the building. They they were able to put that aside or use it to motivate them instead of distract them and, and ultimately get the job done. And, and the the signs that you saw from that game uh, to to lead you into this weekend. It's a good big weekend coming up, but that was a big. Um, what you did you like what you saw throughout that entire game to lead in this weekend? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we really did a great job with puck possession. Um, you know, I thought that one was a very good moment. To, you know, I think when you play some of those teams towards the bottom of the standings, you can be a little bit more tempted to be a little more careless and, and just try and do things yourself. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of unselfish play. Um, there was a lot of really good puck movement uh, and really just puck control. You know, I think we probably had eight or nine minutes of zone time, you know, pretty quickly out of the game. So um, when you're doing that, you're, you're doing a lot of things right. And, uh, you know, holding the team to, without a shot in a period is something that's very, very difficult to do and uh, you know to see us do that in the third period was really cool yeah Spencer Anderson uh, obviously the only goal against was a the power play goal from Brandon Valley uh, but but again ha- has looked sharp over in the, the last three wins he's allowed one goal or less and on all three of those wins which w- what you want to see you know starting in the month of February that last month of the regular season is continuing to be solid as he has been over the last four or five games yeah, and, and you know his confidence was still high. Yeah, and I thought he did a great job again, staying locked in and being engaged. Uh, very difficult to to do that when you're again the third period. You don't have a shot even come into your 
into yourself. So uh, I think that was a very good game from him. And, uh, you know, like we said, it was, it's good that he's had a couple weeks here to rest up. Uh, it's going to be busy going on the rest of the way. Well, then you get Mitchell Friday now at home and then a day off before taking on Aberdeen on Sunday. Uh, so, you, I mean, it really, we talked about it last week that you get one game, then you get the, the two games, then you get back-to-back three-game weekends, but you get a day off between these two games. How important, before we start talking about those teams, how important is that day off on Saturday? If, if it is, you know, would you rather see them play back-to-back days, or is that day off very important and necessary? Uh, I think uh, just the fact that Friday's home and Sunday's away, the Saturday day off will probably be a good thing. Um, if they were all home or all away, then it, I don't think it would have mattered. I think it would have been probably better to be back-to-back. Um, but, you know, I think that day off uh, will be okay, especially to be a later game Friday night. Um, and, you know, I think that, that'll help out a little bit. So, But at the same point in time, I mean, this is getting to the crunch time where, you know, these are all huge games. They're all very important uh, points that we need to get uh, because, again, that the middle of the standings is getting pretty congested. Uh, and the old Mitchell one from uh, the beginning of the season, they, they got an 8-6 win. You guys had the big lead, and they were able to come back and win that game. So uh, now at home, if you have, one, you feel like you owe them, but also, I mean, the, the, like you mentioned too, how log jam that middle of the standings are. This is two big points to pick up and, and two big points to win in regulation and not let it go to overtime. Yeah, and, and you know, they're a team that's ahead of us right now in the standings. Um, you know, I think they're a team that uh, is, is ahead of where a lot of people thought they would be at this point. Um, so, I mean, this is a this is a huge game for us, and it's a four-point swing. You know, it's, it's if they beat us in, in regulation, then, you know, we lose two, they gain two, you know, and, and the same can happen as well. So um, if we can even that season series with them and, uh, you know, get the win this week, then that, I think that will be a huge point for us in the standings or huge two points for us in the standings. But what do you expect from Mitchell? Obviously, they that was the first game of the season. A lot of things can change from, from back in late November to early February. Uh, what do you expect from them? Yeah, I mean, they've got two studs. Um, you know, Loken and, and Denny are two kids that can score from just about anywhere. Um, they've got really good speed, really good skill, a tremendous shot. Um, you, you've got to take them away. Uh, you know, they can score a ton of goals. I mean, they were 2-2 with Huron after one. It was pretty close after two. Then they explode for, like, seven goals in the third. And if you just look at the box score, you never would have thought it was a good game where, you know, Huron probably felt pretty good about the first period and, and pretty decent about the second, and then it just got away from them. So... Um, you know, that's the capabilities those two guys have, um, you know, just to go and, and open a game up really quickly. Um, so we've got to do a good job taking those two away. And then, um, you know, again, I think we've got to find ways to, to really drive the offense. You know, we did that the first half of the game we played in Mitchell. Uh, and then I think our, our foot kind of came off the gas and allowed them back in. And then Sunday you take on the Aberdeen Cougars. You, you beat them at home the first time, uh, but but still a very important game because the, the log jam the standings are, Aberdeen's in there as well. And uh, of going 0 for 4 and getting points this weekend could lend you guys to be 7 or 8 seed, but getting 4 for 4 in points can even jump you up to the 3 seed. Yeah, and it, that's going to be, you know, that's kind of the opposite. You know, I think exactly how we feel about Mitchell is how Aberdeen probably feels about us. Um, you know, they, they played a pretty good game and we were able to edge them um, early in the season at home. Um, and again, we're just ahead of them in the standings. So I said, I think it's the same concept, just we're going to be the other team on, on the other side of it this time. So uh, we know they're going to come at us with everything they've got. Um, you know, they're, they're really needing some big points. Uh, they've had a couple tough losses here in the last couple weeks. Um, so, I mean, they, they're going to be really going because this is when they're looking at their schedule, they probably feel like they can get us, and, and they don't know how many. Again, at this point in the season, every point is going to be absolutely critical to, to move your way up that log jam. What do you expect from them? Anything different than what you guys saw earlier in the season? You know, I think the biggest thing with them is they're doing a lot more. They're playing a lot better possession hockey. You know, I think that early in the year it kind of turned into a little bit of a track meet with us and them, and, um, you know, we were obviously able to win that. Um, I think that they've kind of grown a little bit more in their possession side, um, their neutral zone. They're not dumping it quite as much uh, as they did in the beginning of the season. So uh, I think that'll be uh, an interesting thing to see if that's their they, what they're going to continue to do, if they'll go back to some of that, uh, you know, looking for the long ones and trying to dump and chase more. Again, talk with Steve Steele here of the Hawaii Capitals. They take Mitchell on on Friday at 8 o'clock and then Aberdeen at 3 o'clock on Sunday. We'll have both games on Capital City Rock and on YouTube at Capital City Excuse me, Capital City Rock Sports. All right, let's let's now move into the Super Bowl Sunday. The the Chiefs and 49ers, you know, just what three, four years ago now we were talking about this matchup. The the first time the 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 49ers have been there since twenty twelve. The Chiefs hadn't been there for a long time and now they're they're back again another time and the 49ers back for the first time since twenty twenty. What what do you like about this matchup? Yeah, you know, I think it's it's really neat in that sense that 
you know, I think in a lot of ways the 49ers are the team that the Chiefs were the last time, if that makes sense. You know, the Chiefs, and, and going to the coaching matchup, I mean, Andy Reid had not won the big game. I mean, that was the whole knock on his coaching career. Um, he'd taken the Eagles to the, to the Super Bowl and then lost, um, but he never won that big game. You know, and I think that was the breakthrough moment for him. Um, and, and then obviously you've seen they've been able to, to get back there now. This is the third time they've been back since then. Um, so I think that that's exactly kind of where the 49ers are right now. Uh, I think Shanahan's now the new guy that he's a tremendous coach. He's never been able to win the big game. And I think that this is this is the year that they feel that they're going to break through and, and start their own little mini run here. So does that mean uh, what, what's the final score prediction then? Yeah, I'm going to make Max both happy, and we're going to take the 49ers. Um, you know, and I, I do think this is going to be a high-scoring game. Um, you know, I, I think – Oh, I'm going to go, we'll go 34-31 Niners. Uh, and I think the biggest difference this matchup to their previous matchup in the Super Bowl a few years ago is Brock Purdy. Um, you know, I think obviously he was still in college at the time and no one really knew who he was. Um, and I think that what he's been able to do just shows that he's more than a game manager and he's capable of, of winning them some football games. And uh, just with the weapons that they have, I think their depth of weapons is incredible. I think the Chiefs' depth of weapons is Mahomes and Kelsey. <laughs> and, you know, Rasheed Rice has come on. Um, we'll see if Tony can catch a pass. I don't know that that'll happen. Um, or, or just make sure he lines yeah, up on the side. Or lines up on, on the correct side of the ball or the line of scrimmage. Um, but, I mean, and Pacheco's good. Um, but I just I think that the depth of, of what the Niners have, I mean, you, you've got Ayuk, you've got Debo, you've got Kittle, you've got Jusick, you've got McCaffrey, obviously. I mean, there's just not a bad option there, and then they can do so many things and, and do do so many things um, that I just I think that that's going to be very challenging uh, for the Chiefs to keep pace. You know, and the only way to do that is if they're playing from ahead. If the Niners get up, I don't think it's going to go well. Well, you mentioned Max Foth because that is his team, but you guys both enjoyed the uh, the Michigan uh, National Championship at uh, the beginning of January. Uh, I mean, and then you guys. Uh, Obviously, probably I don't know if you guys talked to you smack or anything like that, but uh, both teams were in the NFC Championship. Well, how crazy! I know that he's probably wanting to feel that way of having his college team and his pro team win the uh, championships. But you were that close to having that that same opportunity that that he has. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I, I think obviously, if you were to say before the season that the Lions were one game from the Super Bowl. Most Lions fans would take that, right? You yeah. know, where if you were to say that the Forty ers are one game from the Super Bowl, a lot of them would be like, "Gosh, again!" Well, you know, you expect them to be in that yeah, spot. I, yeah, I think that. So I think the expectation versus reality fact still favors me. Now, if they win the Super Bowl, that's different. You know, right. any time you say, "Will your team win the Super Bowl?" Will you take it? You say, "Yeah, obviously." <laughs> um, so I mean, I, I think that's a little bit more on the line there for him. But uh, you know, yeah, again, it was it was a really good game a lot two weeks ago. Um, you know, I think. This weekend will be a really good game again. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I think the Lions are for real down the road, and I don't think this is a, a one-trick pony. And hopefully they can turn into San Francisco and, and find a way to get over that hump here in the next year or so. How nice is it to be talking about the Lions in February? And actually in, like, oh, yeah. maybe, and, and talking about the Super Bowl with the Lions yeah, and not instead the draft. Yeah, instead of Lions. talking about which – guy I hope falls to him in the draft it's it's going to be pretty it's it is really cool to do that and and you know it's it, the fun part is you can't even really think about the draft because they're actually picking low enough where there's no realistic way to know who's going to be there is it 29th or 30th that they're picking yeah one, one of the two spots it's going to be so. yeah so I'm just saying that's that's going to be one of the coolest things is that there's not even a real way to put a real projection on who they're going to pick because there's so many potential options there all right well, well we'll go back to hockey here to wrap things up uh, as we our time is coming close here uh, biggest reason for the caps to get four points this weekend because a lot of times they say well you know the biggest reason to have to be in the good spot but four points is necessary this weekend what's the biggest key to make that happen uh, just sustained discipline and sustained effort you know I think if we continue to we're really trending in the right direction in, in how we're playing um, in the style that we're playing and, and how we're doing a lot of things um, we've just got to make sure we can stay disciplined to stay on that path uh, you know we can't allow anything to get us off of our game uh, and if we can do that and, and play three full periods two games in a row I think we'll be four points greater and hopefully towards the top of that log jam 
Well, Coach, I appreciate the time as always. We'll talk to you in the pregame show on Friday against Mitchell. Thanks, John. As uh, head coach Steve Seal of the White Capitals, back with more coaches corner after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. It takes hard work to reach goals. It's a truth that applies to more than just sports. It also goes for your financial goals. You work hard for your money. You deserve an investment strategy that lines up with your game plan. Your local Edward Jones Financial Advisor can help. If your investments aren't getting you closer to the win, visit edwardjones.com or stop by your local peer area Edward Jones office for a financial review. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Capital City Ford Lincoln Toyota is serving the Central South Dakota community and beyond with a great selection of used vehicles. Local trades and program vehicles are available. New Toyotas and new Fords are arriving and selling before they even hit the lot. So don't wait. Stop in and find out what's coming. If you've been thinking about ordering a new Ford, stop in and sit down with one of our sales specialists today. Capital City Ford Lincoln Toyota at 518 East Sioux Avenue and Pier. Call 605-224-7378 and visit CapitalCityFordToyota.com building a home. It's the biggest investment most of us make in a lifetime. Not to mention it's a decision that, well, you pretty much live with day and night. The quality of the workmanship stares back at you like a reflection. It also affects the value of your investment. Choosing the right contractor is critical. Kruger Contracting is that contractor. Call 222-2523. Quality workmanship and materials completed on time. Kruger Contracting. In a word, quality. Call 222-2523. You're listening to Coach's Corner on Central South Dakota's sports leader, KCCR. You like that? You like that? As we welcome you back to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Joining me is Coach Ken Huckins of the Pierce Swim Team. And uh, as the Swim Team competed this past weekend at their home meet, and uh, Coach, it's good talking to you again. And uh, let, let's jump right into it here. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about last week's, uh, last weekend's meet in Pierce. Uh, how'd, that, how'd that go overall uh, in, in general here? How'd, the go, how'd that go for the meet? Yeah, hey, uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, John. Um, the uh, meet was fantastic. Um, we had, uh, about 200 swimmers, uh, total, um, and, uh, represented from, you know, uh, Aberdeen, uh, all the teams out West in the Hills, uh, some swimmers came down from Mitchell. Um, we had some of the Eastern side of the state was over in Marshall, Minnesota this weekend. So we didn't get a chance early to compete against, uh, Watertown and Brookings and Sioux Falls this weekend, but, uh, Overall, it was a great meet. Um, really pleased with uh, with the effort from the kids, and and uh, pleased with the the times that they swam and, and the way that they raced. So, uh, in, individually, how did uh, you know you, you don't have to go through everybody, but uh, how did some of the individuals do for the gov- uh, for the pure swim team? Um, yeah, as you know, as usual, um, you know, you hear, you hear a lot about Mason Ward Zeller. Um, he's a junior this year, and uh, you know he continues to just excel and um i had expected him to be a little bit more tired at this point of the season than he is but he just keeps surprising me and and uh, posting some fantastic time he was just off his personal best times in several of his races um and uh, so he looks really good going forward we got about a month till our state meet and i think we're five weeks out from the speedo sectional meet which is kind of his end of the season meet um, had another swimmer, Charlie Hall, um, that uh, had a fantastic uh, weekend. Um, she was able, you know, our goal this year, one of the goals we had this year was to try to get her qualified for that speedo sectional meet in Iowa City uh, next month. And uh, she was able to do that, um, was able to get the qualifying time she needed in uh, the 50 freestyle. Um, so it was, yeah, it was an exciting weekend, uh, both for me as a coach, but for her, um, that's been kind of a, a goal of hers over the past couple seasons. So that was exciting. Um, had another, you know, a lot of other really great swims out of some of the several of the high school swimmers, uh, Sawyer Thompson, uh, Riley Berg, Claire Madsen had fantastic meets. Uh, Mason Berg and Nicole Weiss swam really well. Um, we had a number of our 11, 12 boys. Uh, Finley Elwine was first place in a number of events, um, and he looks kind of right on track and ready to go for the state meet um and i was was really impressed top to bottom with just with uh attention to detail and technique from our kids um you know i got uh, 
some compliments from uh, some just some spectators that know swimming and some other coaches on on how good our kids looked and especially uh, how good our our uh, turns were looking and, and our starts and those are both things we've really been trying to focus on the last several weeks. You know, and, and for a team that uh, obviously you guys are on the road a lot, there, there's not a whole lot of, it's not a normal uh, yeah. schedule for basketball and baseball and, and those sports where you're home, you know, half the season, you guys are on the road a lot. What does that do, though, for, for the um, the home pool advantage that, that Pierre gets? So, you know, when you're looking at uh, being able to, to have some of the best times, what does that do to being able to be at home and yeah. to, to know your pool a little bit? Yeah, it it does help. Um, you know, we're real familiar with our starting blocks. Um, you know, we um, are we're doing our turns in that pool every day. Um, it is a um, tends to be a pool that puts up some really fast times. Um, you know, kids from um, you know out out of town. I noticed you know had some uh, some really good races. Uh, there were a lot of personal best times across the board, both from peer kids as well as those from. Um, outside of pier, um, but it's a nice advantage to be able to to get a little extra rest, sleep in their own bed. Um, they they tend to um, be a little more relaxed uh, when they're racing. And the other thing, it's it's really nice. They I did notice a lot of the, especially the high school kids. Um, I saw several um, several of their non-swimmers show up and support the um, support their friends, and and uh, we're we're cheering them on, which is great to see. And it, it just it gives the community a chance to um, to kind of come in and watch and, and puts these kids in the spotlight um, at least for a couple of days. And um, had a lot of grandparents that were able to come see their um, grandkids swim. And so it's it great from that standpoint. Um, you know, and our facility is fantastic. The city does a great job of of keeping it up and maintaining it. And uh, you know, and the YMCA as far as managing it. So. It's uh, all around just was a great weekend. Again, talking with Coach uh, Ken Huckins of the Pierce Swim Team. You mentioned too that uh, you're you're closing in on the, uh, the on the state meet, which is I believe the the first weekend of March. So we're within the last month. W- what does something like this do to help uh, the confidence level rise for these swimmers going in and getting closer to the state meet? Um, a couple things. It, it uh, for me as a coach, it gives me a chance we to see. Um, to kind of gauge where they're at time-wise and where we're at training-wise, um, kind of how tired they are at this point of the season, and, and it gives us a, f- a few things that uh, kind of a visual on some things that we need to to maybe tweak and just to just fine tune before the before the state meet coming up here in about four weeks. Um, and it it also with um, you know we have a few kids that just got their very first state qualifying times this weekend in you know one or two events and and we have uh, 10 or 12 kids that'll be going to Aberdeen uh this coming weekend for the I meet mean, called the B championships which is a meet for kids that don't have those state qualifying times yet it's kind of a last chance meet for them um and it gives them a little bit of a championship atmosphere for their uh kind of the end of their season and hopefully we pick up a few more qualifiers for state um and then uh you know we've got Three weeks from now, we have a state meet, twelve and under for our twelve and under swimmers. It'll be up in it'll be in Sioux Falls, and then, like you said, that first weekend in March is the kind of the thirteen and older middle school, high school age state meet. Uh, that's in Watertown this year, and then uh, we close out in close out in Iowa City with a few swimmers at the it's called the Speedo Sectional Meet, which is a just an open meet that USA Swimming puts on. And um, right now, we've got. Charlie Hall and Mason Ward Zeller that'll be going to that, but it's it's a little bit of a more upper level meet, um, a lot faster qualifying times, and and it's also a it's also kind of a kind of a threshold meet that a lot of colleges look to. Um, so there's um, a lot of college coaches that kind of pay attention to that meet and look at athletes and in times from that. So and again, talking with Coach Ken Huckins here of the uh, Pierce Swim Team. This uh, you know, swimming the swim season is always uh, fast and vigorous. There, the, you know, there's not a lot of whole, a lot of open weekends. And uh, you mentioned too that uh, Mason Ward Zeller. You talked about him. You're expecting him to kind of be a little bit more tired than what he was, and he was surprising you. You know, this time of the year, and, and as as we get farther along in this uh, f- this first part of 2024, 
a lot of wear and tear on bodies, and how do you make yeah. sure that uh, they are they they are at a trying to be as close to 100 percent as possible at the end of this season? Um, we do. We you know we talk a lot about um, making sure that they that they're getting plenty of food, nutrition, and remind them the number of calories they're burning every day. Um, and here, you know, we um, we put a little extra focus on that on that kind of rest or making sure they're getting a good night's sleep. Um, that we're you know not getting too um, overtired outside of the outside of the pool deck and, and outside of the pool um, and trying to keep healthy and there's a lot of illness going around right now too so trying to avoid you know avoid those things happening um, before the end of the season and then we will uh, about another week two weeks about two weeks from now we'll we'll kind of start backing off on the intensity of our practices. Um, we'll start doing a little bit more, a little bit more fine tuning and focus on some speed work and and uh, kind of allowing the kids to rest and and uh, build up some of that some of that muscle that we've been kind of tearing down all season. Uh, remind us again where the the next meet is going to be out for the Pier Swim Team. Yep, this weekend we'll uh, be up in Aberdeen for the uh, State B Championships. It's called um, kind of a last uh, last qualifier meet for before the state meet. Then, uh, then we have a weekend off President's Day, and then we have the twelve and under state meet in Watertown. So, and, and then uh, right after that, uh, you mentioned too the speedo, uh, the, the speedo sectional. Yeah, the speedo sectional meets in uh, it's in Iowa City. Um, starts on a Thursday. It's the second weekend in March. And, and then after that, how how do things look for Pierce Swim Team? Is that kind of the um, slow yeah, things we, down? Well, yep. After that speedo meet, after that Iowa City meet, um, we'll take. Uh, give the kids a uh, two or three week break um kind of encourage them to rest up a few of them will start up track season with the high school and middle school um and then uh first part of april we'll be back in the water again getting ready for our summer season uh we're excited you know the first time in a long time we're gonna uh, be able to train outdoors um and actually have That's first right. time ever we're gonna have a uh an actual long course uh 50 meter pool here in town to train in and uh hoping that we're gonna host be able to host a swim meet here uh this summer here in pier so and that, that would be fantastic and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah you know that 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 outdoor pool is going to be huge uh for the city itself but also for the swimmers and, and for the comp- oh. to competitively swim as well too yeah absolutely it's going to be a huge huge thing because it's um it's tough to train tough to train indoors um and you know when you're, and then go race outside when you got to deal with sunlight and clouds and and uh, wind and all of that kind of stuff. And, and not to mention that you know during our summer meets we swim long course, which is a 50 meter pool versus the 25 yard pool that we use indoors. And so it's a whole different type of race and less turns. Um, the training's different, and so yeah, it's going to be really exciting to see. Uh, what difference that makes, and I'm also hoping that just having that new facility, we can, and maybe even to get a little more interest in in folks and joining the team and and giving us a try. Absolutely, and uh, uh, co- talking with Coach uh, Ken Huckins of the Pier Swim Team, Coach, our, our time's starting to run out here. So, uh, what what's one of the big things here? I like to ask these coach, uh, every coach, uh, what's one of the big things uh, that you want to see going into this weekend, going into the final couple weekends before that, uh, as the state meet approaches, uh, the big thing for the the swimmers to be at their best and to be at their peak uh, when it comes to the state championships. Uh, I think the, probably the biggest thing is um, for them to to trust trust in the work that they've put in since last fall um to to know that they've that they've worked and done things that you know the right way for the last several months and and now it's just it's the time to just kind of relax relax enjoy the enjoy the the experience of the state meet and and just go race and have some fun well, Coach, hey, I appreciate the time. As always, good talking to you again. Uh, good luck uh, these coming weekends getting into the uh, the state meets and the state Bs and the uh, state championships. It's, it's good talking to you, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, thanks. I appreciate it, John. That is uh, head coach uh, Ken Huckins of the Pier Swim Team. We'll return with more coaches going after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. kccrradio.com. KCC- As community bankers, BankWest employees are deeply committed to supporting local causes, growing the local economy, and creating local opportunities. 
At a time when you can bank anywhere, we help you choose Bank West. We'll be your financial partner for the long haul, helping you and your community achieve financial success. Bank West. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Member FDIC. Hey, hey you. Are you at a job that is fulfilling, has good benefits to support you or a family today, and retirement goes down the road? If you just said no, listen up. CHS River Plains is hiring operations personnel, drivers, and custom applicators at several locations. These come with a knockout affordable benefit package for you and the whole family. Apply to a job with CHS River Plains and up your benefits straight up. To apply, visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in at one of our locations. CHS is an equal opportunity employer. Score big on your next vehicle purchase with Lamb Motor Company in Oneida in Gettysburg, Lamb Chevrolet and Implement in Oneida, and Lamb Auto Sales in Pier. Check out their large selection of new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs at any one of their locations or go online to lambmotor.com. That's L-A-M-B-M-O-T-O-R.com. Or give them a call today at 800-952-2222. Lamb Motor Company of Oneida in Gettysburg, Lamb Chevrolet and Implement in Oneida, and Lamb Auto Sales in Pier. Let me talk to you. You're listening to Coach's Corner on Central South Dakota's sports leader, KCCR. Yeah. As we welcome you back to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com, join me as Coach Rebecca Feller and Coach. It's the final week of the uh, of the year, getting set for the state gymnastics meet Friday, Saturday. Uh, how, how much fun has this season been? But how how fast has this season felt like it's gone? The fact that we're now here for the state meet. I mean, it, it felt like just a couple of weeks ago that we were like at the beginning of the season, you know, wondering, you know, what's going to happen with state and everything. So, yeah, it's really flown by. Uh, let's go back a couple of weeks here at ESD. You guys competed, obviously qualified and qualified very high up there uh, in the combined scores. What did you see from this team? What would you really like to see this to have this team qualify as high as they did and to see, uh, you know, being able to be ready for state? You know, the team is, is really progressed throughout the year. And they had a really good showing at ESD, and I just hope they would build on that. Um, and they're fully capable of doing that. If they really want it, they can definitely go after it and get it. So, and on Friday is the the double A, uh, well, I guess the A and double A uh, team event. So you get the, the the full team and then the individuals. They'll compete again uh, for the individual scores on Saturday. But 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 how nice is that to have the two days? Obviously, it's not you're not unfamiliar to it. But how nice is it to have the two days to, to compete basically twice? Um. This year, since the state gymnastics tournament is being held in Pierre, it's very nice that we're competing both days because if we weren't competing both days, we would be working the tournament. Um, the girls from the beginning have noticed at different state meets where gymnasts that did not qualify as a team or did not qualify as an individual at a state meet that their school was hosting, they ended up having to work it. So the girl's main goal was, I am not working the state tournament. I will be competing in it. I'll and say, they got that accomplished. It's a lot more fun to, comp- to work and compete than it is to just work the event. Yeah, the, the girls would rather compete than sit and watch. Yeah. I mean, it's fun to watch, but yeah. So, and how, I mean, overall too, how nice is it to be at home? Get, get the familiar equipment. You know, obviously you guys, well, you guys are... You, you practice here in, at the administration building, but at the gym. It's not, but it's not familiar equipment? No, the, the equipment will be coming in from Minnesota. Really? This is the first time they're doing that. So, and that's, this has not been done before? No, this will be all new equipment to everybody involved. There will be a few mats that will be ours, but majority of the equipment is being brought in. So now, uh, with that being said, what, what does it do for a, a home feel? What does it do for, for home court, for home uh, gym advantage is there anything at all because of that we're really hoping that we're going to have you know the home crowd there since it is you know here in pier a lot of times if we go to a meet we're usually traveling and the fans are usually traveling you know three hours plus so it is nice where you know there's no hotel rooms involved you get to sleep in your own bed um, which other schools have had the opportunity to do that Um, this is the first time for us uh, so you get uh, the team on Friday, then individually on Saturday. You get two that are competing uh, all around, and then individuals that will be competing in the other categories as well. Uh, so l- let's go through that list a little bit here because you get two that are competing all around uh, for the entire day. Yes, um, we have uh, Nevaeh Carver and Ryan Shepik 
with all around on the way it's been the last few years, you cannot pre-qualify for the state tournament in all around unless you qualify in each event. Um, Nevaeh and Ryan had, they had pre-qualified earlier in the year on beam and then they were wild cards um, for the other three events. And that's how they got in as all around. So then for for those two uh, specifically, how do, how do you want to see from them? What do you want to see from them? Uh, not just Friday, but going into Saturday when it is the, the individual all around uh, to, to get the best score that they can through every single event. No falls, stuck routines. Um, they've done that before. So I'm pretty confident that they can do it again. And then you have several individuals that are uh, going to be performing in different categories that we can go through those two as well uh, in, in those separate categories. Yes. Um, in beam, we have Nevaeh Carber, Casey Wilson, Ryan Shepik, Maddie Merrill, Becky Spitzer. Um, on bars, we have Nevaeh Carber, Ryan Shepik, Casey Wilson, Maddie Merrill. On floor, Nevaeh Carber, Ryan Shepik, Maddie Merrill, Bolt, Nevaeh Carber, Ryan Shepik, and Kirsten Korber. So a lot of individual on Saturday. Obviously, everybody, you know, the, the team competing on Friday. So you had two chances to come and watch this team uh, perform. Uh, one as a team and then individually with, with the still wearing the pure colors too. But uh, for someone who has not been able to see the gymnastics team perform or hasn't been to a gymnastics state meet, why should they come? What, what's, what's a big draw to the state gymnastics meet for that they should come and support the governors? Um, you know, the, the state team day uh, for gymnastics is a lot of fun um, you know everybody's out there to do their best um, and look their best so it's probably going to be one of the best tournaments that you will go to for gymnastics um, the other thing is that there is they rotate um, half the teams in the warm-up area or a warm-up gym and then the other half of them in the competition area so you're constantly going to be seeing competition um, the other thing about like individual day, it's a little bit more low key for the coaches because it is the athlete's turn to do, you know, if they've got a skill that maybe we didn't want to compete on team day because, you know, we're taking a risk that we didn't want to and we have a discipline on bars that that's probably going to happen. Um, but it's their opportunity for those gymnasts, if they want to try something, that's their score so they can do whatever they want. Um, last year, we had a couple state records broke. So it's always fun. I know um, for Pierre, the last school record was done by um, Mike Mosier on vault at the state tournament. So you're, you're gonna see a lot of these girls, the best of the best in the state. Um, you know, they've had the whole year to practice and it's probably gonna be their, their best routine or best vault. And so this team, uh, ESD, you know, competing with the top, it was in the, the top four at the, the, the combined uh, scores for the ESD and the, and the, the Metro. Uh, so so it's, this is opening for the taking. The, the governors, uh, you know, this isn't a team like, hey, we're, we're going to, you know, maybe get fifth place, sixth place, whatever it might be. This is, a, this is a very good opportunity for this governor team to finish very high at the state meet. Yeah, the opportunity is there. It's, it's pretty close in that um, four, five, six area. But if, you know, there's no falls, they stay on the beam, yeah, fully capable of doing it. You can talk with Coach Feller here of the uh, Pier Gymnastics Team State Meet coming up uh, on Friday, Saturday, uh, and, and you guys obviously hosting, so a lot of, hopefully we get a big crowd. We should be getting a big crowd for the governors. Uh, it would be a lot of fun uh, for you as a coach. I, I'm sure it's probably a pretty busy week for you to get ready, uh, but how excited are you to, to be able to have this event, for you personally to have this event here in Pier for the State Meet? It's awesome. I mean, it's that one time that you know, we get to experience stuff that the other schools have already experienced. Um, Brookings had state meet numerous times, so has Watertown, Aberdeen, Sioux Falls, um, but we're one of the, f the few schools that haven't had a chance, so it's, it's great to have it. So uh, overall, uh, w one of the biggest keys here for the governor, what's, what's going to be one of the biggest keys to have the, the best score that they can, uh, whether it be team score individually, for them, to, what's a big key for that to, to happen? One of the big things um, that's, I think, for any team competing is to stay on the beam. That can... You know, one fall is five tenths, and that's the one event where you can have multiple falls, and you can drop a point or two instantly. So 
you know, having stuck beam routines and, you know, these guys have done it before where they've stuck their beam routines. Um, also having stuck bar routines and, you know, not falling on floor either. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time. Uh, good luck the, the rest of this week, and good luck on Friday, Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun to see the Governors compete here in Pier for the state meet. Uh, good luck, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Hope to see everybody there. That is Coach Rebecca Feller of the Pier Gymnastics team. We'll return with more Coaches Corner for this year on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. This fall, take some time to think about your future. While the leaves make their way down to earth and the last sunset of summer leaves us with an autumn chill, it's time to grab the nearest foam finger and break out the face paint. Rush the stands with First Dakota National Bank and forget how to blink. Fall sports are back with jaw-dropping plays, an electric atmosphere, and epic scores. Make some noise with First Dakota National Bank. Open a new account online today at firstdakotanationalbank.com. Member FDIC. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Pier is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic fill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gale's Gas at 224-5518. That's Gale's Gas at 224-5518. Look, it's no secret that owning a vehicle can cause a lot of stress, and they get a lot of wear and tear on them through every season. Graham Tire wants you to know that you can trust them with any problem that you have with your vehicle. They have fully trained ASE certified mechanics on staff ready to handle it for you. From brakes and bearings to alignments and front ends, let their experience work for you. Over 50 years combined means you can count on them. So if it's time for a transmission flush or even a simple oil change, the only name you need to know is Graham Tire, 421 West Sioux Avenue in Pier. That's a clown question, bro. You're listening to Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. As we welcome back to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com, joining me is Coach Sean Lewis of the Pure Boys Wrestling Team getting ready for the state duels on Saturday. The two seed uh, going in the state duels looking to repeat as state champions and uh, let's jump into this uh, bracket here because, you know, the, the way the standings finish and where the uh, seedings end up being a little bit different, but overall, uh, do, you, do you like where the, the governor's sitting at number two? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I think we were in that spot throughout the year. Um, you know, if you'd asked me after East-West duels, I pretty much had the top four figured out as we, we were all there, um, you know, and so you, you get a head-to-head sense of, you know, who shakes up where, and, you know, you had the upset of Aberdeen over Sturgis, but then... You had us beating Aberdeen, and um, you also then had Rapid City Stevens beating Aberdeen, so they took two losses. So they're sitting behind, kind of locked into that four on the same side as Sturgis, who we figured would be number one. Um, you know, then we we kind of had our little hiccup in the Brandon Valley duel, losing that one, and I figured that probably moved them from seven um, and solidified them into the five. You know, with Aberdeen, and then from that point on, it was you know it's an interesting kind of conundrum of six, seven, and eight, basically down all the way to, to 10. And even for the most part, um, you know, even 11 with Harrisburg who got left out is still a very good dual team. And so, you know, uh, getting to see West Central, a team that we have not dueled or had the chance to duel um, over the years. Uh, they're a team and a coaching staff who, you know, we've, we've tried to see if we could figure something out as they've, you know, had pretty good squad the last couple of years. And have some good kids uh, still coming up, so it's a it's an interesting duel for us, a team that we've not gotten a chance to to see outside of you know two tournaments. So uh, it's a like I said, an interesting matchup, one we're looking forward to. And probably when you look at it too, the the a team that you haven't faced to start the tournament is probably better than trying to face a team that you haven't seen before in the middle rounds. You know, Rabbit City, Stevens, and Watertown. Regardless, if you win or lose, you'll face one of those teams. You've seen them. Uh, T's the only other team in there that you haven't dueled against this year. So you're already familiar with those opponents. So regardless of how the outcome co- goes in that first round, you already have an idea of what to plan for for the second round and most likely in that, that third round. Yeah, you know, having somebody brand new um, for the first round kind of ignites the excitement a little bit, like you said, because it's somebody you haven't seen. Um, somebody got to kind of put a brand new scouting report together and figure out exactly how their team's going to, you know, move, shake, and operate. And then it also does make it a little bit easier, like I said, in later rounds, because you've already got a scouting report that's pretty solidified on the majority of the kids uh, moving forward. 
and, you know, what possible moves they'll make. And it's just a matter of, you know, seeing the weigh-in sheet and, and figuring out where they weighed in their extra guys to see if they can, will, or, you know, even might do something different um, with their lineups. And so, you know, we'll have, we'll have some game plans set, but then, you know, still you reevaluate after each round based on where you go in the bracket and, and ultimately, you know, kind of take a reflection of your kids and, like I said, alter the game plan if need be. And you guys have been in the situation, obviously, before wrestling in the state duel tournament, winning the state championship uh, a couple times in the state duel, but also this year, the East-West, you guys wrestled four duels. This one would be three at max. And, and so it's not unfamiliar to, you know, again, with tournaments, you're wrestling, those guys are wrestling three if the usually wrestling more than three times in a day to begin with, so uh, knowing that the you know the format how it is, you're you're not worried about guys being too tired at the end. That they're they've been in this situation before, they've been in multiple matches before. That it's not unfamiliar to you. Yeah, definitely not an unfamiliar format and situation. Um, it's kind of really nice that it's not part of the state tournament this year, so you're not trying to wrestle you know a ninth match by the time you get to the state finals. Uh, there's a lot of fatigue that's in that. Uh, you know, with East West, we had four, and I can tell you what, by the time we got to our fourth duel for the day, uh, some of our kids were pooped, you know, just not taking care of your nutrition and hydration the way that you should. Um, we had a long talk about that yesterday, just making sure that we've got all our bases covered about making sure that your cooler's packed, it's full of good stuff, and you don't have a second day or another day to weigh in. So you get that weigh in, and then you, you rehydrate, and you basically take care of your body and maintenance throughout the day. And, you know, when we were at home for East West, uh, kind of the good and the bad of being at home we we didn't probably pack a cooler and you know take care of enough of that stuff because you just assumed you were at home and so you didn't do the normal things that you do and we're on the road but you know now ultimately we're in brookings and on the road and so we're making sure on uh leaving no stone unturned uh what's a what, what's a key going in that first match to, to make sure you beat west central get into that second round what, what's one of those keys to to get yourself good in a good spot going in the second round you know i mean right away you got 14 weight classes, you want to win a majority of them. Um, you know, as, as good as they are, I, I'm pretty, you know, certain that it could go seven to seven um, in those. Like I said, West Central's still a pretty good team. And so if you're going to pencil out a duel on seven to seven, you got to make sure you've got the bonus point advantage. And so you're, um, you're just making sure kids know their job of, hey, you've got to go give up bon- or go get bonus. And, you know, the other ones that were a little outmanned in matches, we just, we cannot be giving up bonus. And so, you know, when it when a duel is that close, if there is a flip match, we got to be able to try and win those and and spin that number in our favor, and you know, work from there. So, I mean, that was ultimately the downfall in our our Brandon Valley duel is um, we tied on points, of, you know, thirty to thirty or whatever it was, but then you know, ultimately we lost eight to six in in the matches won. So we had kids going out and get bonus, but just we needed that one more win, and it would have totally flipped the duel. Uh, this is a state tournament, then you go back into individual regions next weekend, and then you get to the individual state tournament. So you get one partial portion of the season to end on Saturday. For you as a coach, and obviously being the first time that this has been separated like this since it's come back, um, what's that feeling like that you're kind of you're kind of wrapping up the season, but you're not really wrapping up the season at all by the time Saturday night comes to a close? Yeah, it's interesting because normally this is our off week, um, you know, so kind of coming back after the Yankton tournament and just having to totally regroup and, you know, get the guys ready to, to go compete for a state title. It's it's a little bit different, um, but we also resorted back to, you know, preparation and game planning that we institute, you know, later on in the year. We just get to move it up a couple weeks early and, um, you know, it's, it's nice. It kind of keeps some energy a little bit rather than having that off week and, um and like I said, moving forth through that, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to wait and see. I mean, having the dual state tournament on a separate week, um, I'm not going to pass any judgment as to good, bad, or indifferent uh, until we actually roll through it. And so then once we've gotten through it and get a chance to reflect over, you know, these three weeks, uh, I'll probably have a way better answer for you in a month, that's for sure. I was going to say, because right now you're, you're so focused on the, the dual that uh, what you felt about it at the beginning of the season – you probably don't even have a feeling about it right now because you're just you're locked in. This team needs to be locked in and ready to go. Like you said, good, bad, or indifferent, that you're you're locked in and ready to go on Saturday. Yeah, I mean that's that's exactly. They're so locked into preparation and and making sure that we've got everybody, you know, being able to make weight, pass skin checks, you know, kind of all of the other stuff. Like I said, we talked about nutrition and hydration yesterday, and so making sure that you know everything lines up. 
um, for these guys in their preparation. And then, you know, ultimately we got to still practice and do all the things and just really sharpen, sharpen everything. Um, we took quite a bit of, a bit of time on Monday also to do some film work and some film studies. So, you know, getting to watch, uh, not only our film, but each other's film and preparation for a lot of these opponents, uh, that we'll see on Saturday, uh, was, was a fantastic thing to do is when you get into the grind of the season, you don't always take time to do those things. So for us to be able to do that, uh, was huge this week in preparation for these duels. And also before you know, we, we go back to duels too, that uh, there's been guys that have gotten the hundred wins uh, on their, in their careers. Uh, multiple guys have done this. How, how awesome is it to see the, that milestone be hit by several guys this year? I mean, just absolutely incredible that as many wrestlers are hitting this milestone this year, like, Sometimes you'll get one or two, but to have, I mean, as many as we've have hit this, it just shows that, I mean, a lot of these guys have been doing this for, for a long time. They've all been doing it together. You know, they've had to put in a lot of hard work to be able to, you know, stay injury free, get all these wins, get in the varsity lineup is, you know, navigating that is, is difficult. And then, you know, to see the girls side also get, get two, um, you know, with a couple others approaching, um, you know, I think for for the boys, I think we're at five, and I think we could end up with two more um, here really quick by the end of the year. So to see nine boys and, you know, a possibility of, of three girls and 12 kids total at 100, and, 100 wins, uh, you know, in their career, some of them in the latter part of their career, some of them still in the early parts of their career, it's it's just fantastic time to be a part of Governor Wrestling with all the winning um, individually and team-wise that's been going on. And I was just about to say, what, what that says about the, the Pure Governor Wrestling program and, and not just, you know, all these guys have been doing it for so long, but they're winning. They're not just doing it for so long and, and losing a lot or just being an average wrestler. That means that these guys and girls are very good wrestlers. Yeah. I mean, you think about just what it takes to get to 100 wins. In reality, it's three solid seasons in a varsity lineup. Um, you know, sometimes matches-wise, you can maybe get there a little bit sooner. But uh, still, I mean, if you're talking 40 to 42 matches, you've still got to win a mass majority of those inside of those uh, three years to be able to get there. And so just having all these kids hit, you know, at the right time and, you know, sometimes even getting on varsity when you've had teams that are as successful as we've had. I mean, it's it's very difficult um, you know, I remember sometimes I can think back to days with uh, Austin Sanger, Lincoln Terman, Michael Lusk, Will Terman. Um, Austin was our 106 pounder and Will was our backup and Lincoln and Michael were, you know, the backups behind the backups. Well, then, you know, you fast forward later and you've got, you know, Will is a four time state champ who in eighth grade, you know, couldn't even make our lineup or even, you know, like get there. You got Michael who four-time finalist, three-time champ, we, was third or fourth string. And so, I mean, sometimes the depth of where we've had these kids and Lincoln wins too, and Austin's got, you know, five medals um, to go and show as a state place winner is just, it's it's crazy. Um, you know, sometimes, like I said, our backups can place at the state tournament and, and you're sitting there as a backup. And so you get a chance to wrestle on varsity. You got to take every advantage of it that you can and, and learn and develop for the time where, you know, you do get in the lineup and you get to rock and roll from there. All right, before we start to, to really wrap things up here, Super Bowl is on Sunday. Uh, you, you are a guy that has won uh, several years in a row and several different times of uh, picking the team and picking the score right, or at least being the closest to getting the score right. Uh, so you get a chance to, to defend the crowd again. Who wins between the Chiefs and uh, 49ers, and what's the score going to be? Oof, I tell you what, this is this is a tough one. I don't, I'm not sure. Was I even in the mix last year? I think I may have picked I, I, wrong. I think um, you were, but you may not have actually <laughs> won it, and there might not have been a real champion. But, uh, you know, I have won a few previous. I I was kind of thinking of this one actually over lunch as I was hearing a debate on whether or not that it would be um, Super Bowl or bust for either of these teams and just kind of the complexity of that. So, um, you know, I would say I'm going to pick the 49ers. Okay. Um, which is probably going to upset a lot of you know Taylor Swift fans out there, including my daughter, who would just be absolutely upset if I picked against the Chiefs. But uh, no, um, I'm going to pick the 49ers simply because you know I think that they have the most physical wide receiver, the most versatile running back. They've got the highest paid defensive line, which hasn't been all that great at, at times this year. Um, you know, and I'd say probably one of the best linebackers in the business right now as well. So. Um, now, score is I still think that Patrick Mahomes is going to do Patrick Mahomes thing. 
And so if I were to say and pick a score, I'm going to go with 27 49ers, 21 Chiefs. All right. All right. There we go. Nice. I have no clue what anybody else has picked. So if I've matched somebody else's you, score, you, my apologies. You, you did not. I don't <laughs> I don't believe, but you did not match the score. So, yeah, 49ers. It's kind of been a consensus of the 49ers winning. So we'll, we'll see if – I think at this point if uh, – if the Chiefs win, then we don't have a winner this year. Wow! Because I feel like most everybody has got the the Forty Niners winning. So, uh, but but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it went the other way. I would just I mean the Forty ers have decided to show up in games. Yeah, they've absolutely just decimated people. But there's a lot of doubt moving into the postseason about the Chiefs, and I think they've answered the bell in every single one of those with the way that they've won in every postseason game on the road so far as well. So I think definitely it'll be an interesting matchup for the Super Bowl and one that'll be exciting. And again, talking with Sean Lewis here, to, to wrap things up here, we'll get back to wrestling. Uh, obviously, the, the state dual championship was yours last year. You've won it uh, another year as well. Uh, but but overall, the biggest key here for the governors to get a repeat in the state dual championship. Uh, you know, we, we had to focus on one duel at a time, ultimately one match at a time. Um, which a lot of times boils down to one position at a time. And so um, kind of one of the things we focused on this this uh, this week so far in practice is everybody's got a decision to make. And so if we can get everybody making the decisions that they're going to go ahead and do their job, it doesn't matter what duel it is, we're going to be able to come out on top. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time. Uh, looking forward to, to watching this uh, state duel t- tournament on uh, Saturday in Brookings. And uh, wish you the best of luck, and we'll talk to you again soon. I appreciate it. Thank you. As head coach Sean Lewis of the Pier Boys Wrestling Team, back with more Coaches Corner after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. People helping people. Have you ever wondered what the benefits are of becoming a Wahi Federal Credit Union member? At Wahi Federal Credit Union, we reinvest profits in you. We do this in the form of lower interest rates, higher dividends, and low to no fees. So come check us out or come in at 221 East Pleasant Drive in Pier. Because at Wahi Federal Credit Union, we treat our members like they own the place because, well, they do. Hawaii Federal Credit Union. At Shane's Pharmacy, your health care is important, and Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner, they will answer your questions, and they will even deliver to your home or office. Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pierre, proud to support high school athletics. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now I'm playing for real. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. What play should I call now? Maybe corner three. He's hot. He is hot. Keep feeding that guy. Now back to Coach's Corner with KCCR award-winning sports director, John Winkler. And we welcome you back inside the KCCR studios one final time here this evening as we want to thank our coaches and Coach Steve Steele of the White Capitals, Coach Ken Huckins of the Pier Swim Team, as well as also Coach Rebecca Feller of the Pier Gymnastics Team and Sean Lewis of the Pier uh, Boys Wrestling Team. As we, again, have those state tournaments coming up, it will be the state gymnastics meet on Friday and Saturday here in Pier over at the Pier High School uh, as the governors get a chance to, and the city of Pier gets a chance to host the uh, state gymnastics meet, as well as also having uh, the boys wrestling state dual tournament coming up on Saturday in Brookings and the governors will be competing in that as well. So we'll have the recaps coming up on Monday. It'll be on the website as well uh, for the, for the weekend as well coming up here as we will uh, have another edition of coaches quarter. We're in the final month. We've got just two more shows left after tonight uh, on the 14th on Valentine's day. We'll also have one on the 28th to wrap up the coaches quarter season. So we are looking forward to uh, the next couple of weeks, talking more state tournaments, recapping state tournaments and uh, getting set for the the final month of of our show here for the season we'll be on the same time same place so next week wednesday right here 5 30 on kccr and online at kccrradio.com and of course you can go with playback anytime on youtube at kccr sports want to say again thanks to our coaches same time same place next week wednesday as you have a good rest of your wednesday nights You've been listening to Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccr.com. Coach's Corner is brought to you by Todd's Electric, Shane's Pharmacy, Lamb Motors, Avera, Owahi Federal Credit Union, Edward Jones Financial, Graham Tire, 
Kruger Contracting, CHS River Plains, Gales Gas, Bank West, and Capital City Ford Lincoln and Toyota. To hear the show again, head to YouTube at KCCR Sports for shows at any time. This has been a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports, Central South Dakota's sports leader.